Hello everyone. Um, now that we know how to find the Jacobian using velocity propagation, uh, we're going to talk about how we can find the same Jacobian using direct differentiation method. Uh, as an introduction, I'm going to talk in general, not particularly for robotics, uh, about multidimensional uh, derivatives or partial derivatives, uh, which basically says if we have a system of equations, uh, y i through y n, uh, and each one of these functions are functions of x1 through xm, as we see here. So we have a system of equations, y, that are functions of x. So we can put it in a vector for y, and then here we have a vector of functions. So y1 equals to f1 of x1 through xm, and y2 all the way until, until yn. So if we have the system of equations, uh, and we'd like to differentiate both sides here with respect to x, uh, we can put it in this way, dy partial differential of y with respect to x, and we can partially differentiate the function, each one of the functions with respect to each x. Uh, now in general here we can manipulate this a little bit, so we can multiply both sides by uh, dx, and in that case this becomes dy equals to df by dx times dx. And the reason we put it this way because this here this particular fraction becomes uh, the Jacobian later on. <clears throat> so going through this here, as you can see, we have partial differential of y all the way up to partial differential of yn. And then in this matrix here, or this is actually a vector, we do partial differential of the first function with respect to x1, dx1. So that's a partial differential of f with respect to x dx. Okay. And then we do this for each x all the way up to xm. And then we repeat the same process again for the second function all the way down to the nth function. So at the end here, we will have the nth function uh, partial differentiated with respect to the mth uh, uh, x. All right, so from here we can look at, let me get this here. Uh, we can look at this as a chain rule. It's called a chain rule. Uh, so this chain rule is, you know, a mathematical representation that's a well-known uh, form of uh, partial differentiation. Now from this, what we can do, we can extract dx out. So all of these dx1, dx2, all the way to dxm, all of them, we can extract them out to a single um, column vector. Um, so, and then from here, we can create this function or this uh, particular matrix that would have partial differential of each function with respect to x1, x2, x3, and so forth. Um, so this particular uh, form of the equation is equivalent, equivalent to what we see right here. And if we open this up, of course, we're going to come up with the same equation that we had up here. So this particular um, fraction right here represent the Jacobian. So this becomes a Jacobian in general if we have a system of functions uh, with, you know, that are dependent on uh, variables. <clears throat> now, if we divide both dy and dx here, both sides, by dt, okay, so it becomes dy partial differential of dy by dt, <clears throat> this makes this time uh, differentiation y dot. Okay, so basically this becomes y dot and this becomes x dot and as we saw uh, from, from this particular matrix, this would be the Jacobian. So we can have this form of the Jacobian written uh, in terms of uh, y dot velocities in y and velocities in x. So that's the relationship between velocities in x and velocities in y. Now I want you to note here that uh, j, in this case, is a function of x, and x changes with time. So every time x changes, j changes. So if you are programming something here to control a robot, you have to make sure that you update this in every loop. Uh, Jacobian will have to be changed, or will be changed, at every step of the loop. As x changes with time, j changes with time as well. Now, similar to what we did in general, we can do the same partial differentiation for robotics, um, and we can use the 
uh, find the Jacobian using the direct differentiation. So we're going to start here with uh, the linear Jacobian or Jacobian for linear velocities that relates linear velocities of the end effector uh, with the joint velocities. So here we start velocity of the end effector n relative to frame zero. So that's the velocity on x and y and z, which represents x dot, y dot, and z dot of frame n relative to frame zero. And that's a three by one uh, vector. On the other side here, we have a vector of joint velocities. So that's theta, theta dot one through theta dot m. And that gives us a, a vector of dimension m by one, where m is the number of joints. Now remember, if we have a prismatic joint, that theta dot becomes d dot. So if we have, let's say, two revolute joints and one prismatic, that becomes theta one dot, theta two dot, d three dot. So uh, this has to be reflective of what kind of joints we have. Now here we have the Jacobian where it's basically partial derivatives of each one of the functions of x and y and z with respect to the joints. Where do we find this? So you know, here we have velocities, but if you recall the transformation matrix that we have uh, that relates frame n or the end effector frame to frame zero, that transformation matrix has the fourth column has the definition of x and y and z in the Cartesian space. So we can take these x and y and z functions from the transformation matrix and do the partial derivative of x with respect to theta one and theta two and so forth. And then we can take the partial derivative of y with respect to theta one and so forth. And same thing with uh, the z function. So that gives us a Jacobian here uh, that would be the linear Jacobian in reference to frame zero. As you may, rec you may recall, uh, the previous method that we used, the velocity propagation method, gave us the Jacobian relative to frame n of the last frame of your robot. This method actually gives us the Jacobian directly in frame zero. So the reference here is directly in frame the zero. Okay. Uh, now, if we look at this, basically it looks like this equation in short. So velocity of n relative to frame zero is the Jacobian in reference to frame zero. So these two are consistent and compatible times theta dot. Okay. Now this equation, when we use the velocity propagation method, remember we used velocities of frame n relative to frame n, and that gave us the Jacobian relative to frame n. Here, this is velocity of frame n relative to zero, and the Jacobian relative to frame zero. Uh, as we talked about earlier, m is the number of joints. If they're revolute joints, they represent theta. So we have here theta dots and here thetas. If they are prismatic joints, then there will be d dots here and d in here. And n is the last frame or the frame of the end effector. I have a couple of notes here to emphasize on. Uh, this method gives us the Jacobian as we talked about earlier, uh, the Jacobian of frame n relative to frame zero. So make sure you understand this. This is Jacobian of frame n relative to zero. What we did in the, in the velocity propagation, we found the uh, Jacobian of frame n relative to frame n. So this is slightly different in that perspective. Of course, we can transform from relativity to n between n and zero by pre-multiplying by the proper rotation matrix. Uh, the other note I want to emphasize also is that theta i represents the uh, joint angle for revolute joints. And if we have prismatic joint, we have to make sure that we replace theta by d. So here we'll have d dots instead of theta dot for whichever joint that is prismatic. And here, whatever theta that corresponds to prismatic will be turned into d instead of theta. Now, if you want to find the Jacobian for angular velocities or angular Jacobian, uh, we have a slightly different way to find this relative to frame zero directly, since we cannot do direct differentiation for rotation uh, matrices. Uh, but this method here gives us the Jacobian directly again in frame zero. So we start here with uh, the angular velocities of frame n relative to zero. And that angular velocity is defined by the angular velocities of each joint. So we have the summation of all angular velocities of each joint. Now, as you know, uh, prismatic joints do not produce any angular velocities. So this is only for revolute joints 
and anything that's prismatic joints uh, is not part of uh, this angular velocities. So we put a k here, and this k is 0 for prismatic joints, so prismatic joints don't count, and it's 1 for revolute joints. Okay, so this method here just basically takes out prismatic joints and keep in revolute joints for this particular equation. Now, um, we know that each joint has a revolute uh, angular velocity for each revolute joint uh, of theta dot. And if we pre-multiply this by zii, that puts this angular velocity only in the z-axis of that particular frame. So this is 0, 0, 1, and this is theta 1 dot or theta i dot, so that gives us 0, 0, theta i dot for that particular frame. Now this is in reference to i, and we need to have it uh, transformed into a reference of 0. So we pre-multiply this again by the rotation matrix, and that gives us the angular velocity of that particular frame in reference to frame 0. Okay, so uh, as we said earlier, z is always 0, 0, 1. And we, if, if we open the summation up, it's basically we're adding all these uh, angular velocities together to find the angular velocity of the end effector. So we have k1, r1 relative to frame 0, z11, and theta1 dot. So that give me, gives me here the angular velocity of joint 1 ref in reference to frame 0. Only if it's a revolute joint. If it's a prismatic joint, of course, this whole thing goes to 0. And then we do the same thing for the second joint and then all the way to the mth joint. Now, uh, since this here is, uh, all of these are uh, vectors, so we have omega n n that represents omega x, omega y, and omega z of frame n relative to frame 0. And again, that's a 3 by 1 matrix. So that is basically this portion. And then all these vectors here can be put together and separate theta dots, theta 1 dot, theta 2 dot, all the way to theta dot i m into its own vector. So we have the vector here of theta 1 dot all the way to theta m dot, and that would give me an m by 1 matrix or vector. Okay, and what's left here is the same as these, but they're their own elements. So this is a 3 by 1 vector, 3 by 1 vector, and all the way here to a 3 by 1 vector. And that would make up my Jacobian or angular Jacobian relative to frame 0. The dimension of this uh, matrix is a 3 by m, where m is the number of joints. <coughs> now since we have the, uh, the angular Jacobian and the linear Jacobian, again we can put them together here in a single Jacobian, and that top portion would include the linear Jacobian that we found earlier, and this would include the angular Jacobian for this particular method. <coughs> 